Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and I have remembered my notes uh, this evening. Very good. Um, uh, uh, tonight, <coughs> I'd like to um, uh, speak about the importance of our commercial fishing uh, sector, and also, of course, how important it is uh, for all Australians to support that sector, uh, particularly over this period of the year, where uh, many of us um, uh, will be uh, tucking into uh, very delicious seafood over the Christmas break. Uh, and uh, I wanted to remind everybody uh, that uh, the importance of buying Australian uh, seafood uh, over that period, because uh, the sector does need our support. It employs thousands of Australians. It's a huge, uh, both a huge uh, producer of economic wealth domestically uh, and also a quite a large export industry for our country. Um, it does face some challenges, though, uh, both uh, economic and also regulatory. And I'll speak a little bit about those tonight, but. I did first want to thank uh, the uh, organisers uh, of um, our annual national seafood barbecue. Uh, it's become a tradition that was first actually established by Senator Ron, former Senator Ron Boswell, uh, I believe the sixth longest serving senator in this place. Uh, he, he established a, a, a tradition of having a, a barbecue at the end of the year, end of the parliamentary year, to celebrate the seafood industry. Uh, and to uh, express our support for it. Uh, it started apparently at a small little courtyard with only probably a few people and Ron's friends and it's grown into a, a quite a large uh, turnout we have these days and we invite the media along and sell to them the importance of the industry as well. How it usually seems to work in seafood politics, Mr President, is, uh, and I've had a bit of experience with it now, uh, they get you along. Uh, they feed you lots of uh, fish and prawns and Morton Bay bugs, give you a bit of drink, and then they tell us, oh, can you support us on this particular issue? And it's pretty hard to refuse once you're full of their, their beautiful product. Um, and hopefully we'll have the same effect uh, on the media as well after this year's event. Very well supported. I did want to thank those, those industries, those, uh, those, those, the seafood industry individual businesses who helped us, uh, a, a Raptus and Sons, Austral Fisheries, the Ocean King Prawn Company, the Sydney Fish Market and Urangan Fisheries. They all uh, helped provide uh, the products uh, which made the event such a success and also to IGA and Metcash who helped along with the, the beverages. Um, uh, 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 Mr President, as I said, this is an incredibly important sector for our economy. It produces $2.4 billion a year. Uh, of that, around $1.2 billion is exported every year. Every Australian, or on average, each Australian eats around 25 kilograms of seafood uh, every year, and that makes it our fifth most valuable uh, food industry uh, um, in the nation. Uh, so it is of very, very high importance. Um, uh, it also employs 8,608 people directly, and another um, uh, uh, 4,000-odd are employed in the processing uh, sector. Of all the states in Australia, uh, the seafood industry is the largest in Queensland. Queensland uh, in Queensland, almost 3,000 uh, people are employed in, directly in the seafood um, industry, and it's of incredible importance to particular regional Queensland towns, including uh, Corumba, Cairns, uh, uh, Roslyn Bay near Yapoon, where I live, and Mooloolabar as well in the Sunshine Coast. Uh, however, as you might be aware, uh, Mr. President, uh, the, the numbers employed in the industry have fallen considerably over the last decade. Uh, only 10 years ago, uh, 14,000 or so uh, Australians were employed uh, in the sector, and that's reduced to 8,600, as I mentioned. Uh, a big reduction over 10 years, uh, and uh, uh, that's been caused by uh, uh, some importation of seafood from overseas, but also by changes to government laws and regulations, which have made it harder. Uh, for the seafood sector to operate in this country. Some of those laws were probably certainly justifiable, but others that I've had experience with uh, seem to have no justification in science, uh, seem to be based more <coughs> on the emotion of locking up particular areas uh, and selling that to the public as a kind of environmental um, uh, 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 sales pitch, uh, and, uh, and also to, to try to get some of the recreational fishing industry uh, on side. We've had a recent example in Queensland where the newly elected Queensland Labor government took a very ill thought through uh, policy to the election, uh, I think on the basis that they probably thought they weren't going to be elected. Uh, a couple of weeks before the election they promised to lock up an area the size of the ACT, just uh, 
off the coast of um, Rockhampton and Yapoon. Uh, it's uh, an incredibly productive uh, area for seafood. It's actually, it produces a third of the wild barramundi caught on our eastern seaboard along the Fitzroy River and, uh, and the associated Fitzroy Delta. A third, a third of the wild barramundi caught on the eastern seaboard. Uh, and they were going to, or have now, actually, they promised in the election to lock up that entire area, entire area, no longer available for the commercial fishing sector. Around 40 families uh, in the region have lost their livelihoods. They've been offered compensation as poultry as $10,000 for, for that, um, uh, that cost. Uh, and many of them now have not a lot of other options. Some of them are, have had to go up to the Whit Sundays area, which is quite a long way away. Um, and also an area which is already uh, well tapped by other fishermen. So there's a competition now for that resource, and that's having an impact, of course, on the fishermen in that region as well. An extremely uh, ill thought through um, uh, policy because it's got nothing to do with the science. It's not based on science at all. It's simply locking up an entire area. Uh, the sustainable catch of wild barramundi in the Fitzroy River is not uh, zero. And of course, <coughs> the um, uh, so the policy is not justified on science. The policy is justified because, in their view, it will lead to a boost in tourism in the sector, and it hasn't provided that. There's been no evidence presented at all uh, that, that such a, a boost would occur, uh, and uh, it's actually been tried in other states. Uh, the New South Wales government, the former Carr government, locked up areas in northern New South Wales. There's been university studies done uh, of uh, the impact of those uh, net-free zone areas, uh, and no evidence again that they actually lead to an increase in tourism. Um, that's the evidence and data, but just in your gut, you know that people are not, are not uh, going to spend thousands of dollars uh, to come to the Fitzroy River to catch wild barramundi on, 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 on holidays. Uh, there are plenty of other places in the country that they can go and fish. Obviously, we'd love them to come to Rockhampton, Yapoon, if they like, but having net free ban areas in and of itself is not going to lead to some tourist mecca in central Queensland. And it's quite disappointing, Mr President, that we do continue to shut down these areas because uh, we have so much potential, so much potential as a nation to provide uh, for the protein needs of our own country and our own people uh, and also those overseas as well. We have the world's third largest ocean territory. The third largest ocean territory. Uh, uh, exists uh, in, in our sovereign state, in our sovereign waters, in our economic exclusive zone. We have the world's seventh largest coastline. I think Senator Ludwig, was, through you, Chair, was mentioning uh, that uh, just in an earlier debate, a seventh, a seventh largest coastline in the world. Yet, despite those attributes for an island nation, you would imagine that we'd actually be quite a large producer of seafood. Uh, we produce, uh, of all countries, the 57th most seafood in the world. So 56 countries produce more seafood than us, even though we have the third largest ocean reserves and the uh, seventh largest coastline. It doesn't add up. We only, we only, we only produce around 28 kilograms per square kilometre of our ocean uh, in terms of marine catch. Um, and, and, and while that is one of the lowest in the world and we have an enviable environmental record on seafood production, what ends up happening, of course, um, Mr Acting Deputy President, is that people still eat seafood in Australia. They just import it from other countries, and we just export uh, the environmental problem to them. Every import requires a, a corresponding uh, ledger entry on the, other on the other side of the balance sheet, and by importing our seafood from overseas, we're exporting the environmental issues to other countries, particularly in Asia and Southeast Asia. So while we extract 28 kilograms per square kilometre here in Australia, in China, in Thailand, and in Vietnam, where many of our much of our seafood is imported from. Um, their extraction rates are more than 5,000 kilograms per square kilometre. So we're 28 uh, kilograms per square kilometre. In those countries, it's more than 5,000, and they have the attendant uh, environmental and other issues associated with such a large and, and intensive source of extraction. We could quite easily uh, increase our uh, um, production, our waters, reduce our imports, and overall for the globe, there would be a better environmental outcome. But unfortunately, um, that, that, that doesn't appear to be uh, the direction of uh, many Labor and Green governments across the world. We've actually had a debate just the other day uh, that we should not allow uh, a particular vessel into the country uh, because this industry continues to be demeaned, even though it's made up of hardworking Australians 
who produce the best things in this country, and that includes prawns on Christmas Day.